Can you cook a pork shoulder on a rotisserie? I don't know yet. Hey yo, this is Dash, and I am back out at Charlotte, and I am gonna get Charlotte prepared to do some rotisserie cooking. Uh, in my last video, you guys saw Eric from Barasso Barbecue sent out this Weber rotisserie, and I'm gonna put it to good use today. Hopefully I can get everything that I need to set up and worked out, but the first thing I'm gonna do is I have to get some charcoal lit. Once I get the charcoal lit, I'm actually gonna use or use it as Weber recommends. I'm gonna put charcoal on either side of the, of the grill. I'm gonna go ahead and get a water pan down in the middle. Like, I'm gonna fill it halfway with water. Then I'm gonna use the, the stock pieces that came with the grill to actually put charcoal on either side of the water pan that I put down at the bottom. I'm gonna get some charcoal in those, get everything set up, get a charcoal chimney lit, put, pour that over top, and then the last thing I have to do, I have to get my pork. L, I did tell you guys I would do lamb, sorry. I had some pork shoulder in the house, so as opposed to me buying something else, getting something new to cook, I figured I would cook what I already had on hand. So, I'm gonna get this set up, you guys sit back, and I'll see y'all in a couple minutes. Yo, this is Dash. Get ready. done the hard part. Hard part is going to be getting everything set up. So now at this point, I'm going to change my gloves, go inside, get my piece of pork. I'm going to get it seasoned. I'm going to be using some of Big Steve, some of his pork seasoning, and get some light on so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to go ahead and get that seasoning, come, out, come back out here, get the pork on the rotisserie, and we're going to go from there. some butcher twine here I have Big Steve's pork seasoning here and I don't know how much of it we're gonna have left afterward but we're gonna get it we're gonna use it I know how I season. I'm gonna just go ahead and open this thing up. Oh, it smells great. Smells some, some smoked paprika, and some cayenne maybe.
So it looks like he's good on the rotisserie. So far so good. Now what I'm gonna do is tie up these loose pieces and hopefully tie all of this together. the long way. Steve, I, can, I'm, I must tell you, this smells pretty good already, as is, and we haven't even gotten it over the flame yet. All right, my charcoal is almost ready. My pork shoulder looks pretty good from here. pretty much done here. Just a little extra seasoning on top. This thing looks pretty, pretty daggone amazing. It looks like it'll all hold together, which is great. At this point, I'm going to go get that water pan and I guess nothing else to do but to get the charcoal put into the, into the chimney, put the charcoal chimney put into the little charcoal basket. All right, so charcoal chimney is ready. We're just gonna pour some charcoal on top. Uh, yes, I put a little bit too much charcoal down in the baskets there, but it'll be all right. see I went ahead and I actually I used warm water so at this point let's get the ring back on here and let's get, get it loaded up centered in here. Let's 
slide it down just a little bit. What I'm gonna do next time is I'm gonna put a mark in the middle so I know where I need to center stuff or where I need to get stuff so it'll be centered on my skewer here. But we're almost there. Perfect. All right, guys, you see it. Both shoulders are spinning. All right, so you guys see, I had the rotisserie going. I'm gonna get this closed off. I'm gonna choke the fire down to halfway. Let's get the dome put back on here. And we'll see what it does. Now, I do actually wanna put a little bit of smoke on this. So I'm gonna take one lump of wood put it right on my fire there and I'm gonna put my dome or the the exit here in the middle so all of the heat smoke have to come out and up through the middle but uh, it's 11 o'clock right now I'll come back and check on this in about an hour all right so after a half an hour this is what I have and boy oh boy we definitely have a lot of charring on the uh, on the meat here. I probably because of the fact that I'm I'm doing a pork shoulder. This looks like it really would have been good if it were the lamb, but because I had pork shoulder in the house, I wanted to try and cook it. I didn't really know what to expect, but we're going to we're going to keep at it. Just let it do what it does. And I'll get a thermometer out here in a bit to, to check the temperature to see what it's doing inside. But first half an hour down, what I think I might end up having to do is take the pork shoulder, put it into a pan and finish it in the oven uh, because there's no way it's gonna cook on the internally as, as, as much as I need it to. But this seems like a pretty cool experiment so far. You know, one of those, can you cook a pork shoulder on a rotisserie? I don't know yet. <clears throat> Alright guys, so I'm back out at the rotisserie at Charlotte with the rotisserie. And I told you guys at the half hour mark, I checked the thermometer here and it was showing 400 degrees. I did choke off the fire a little bit. I have it down to about quarter uh, open and I choked off the exhaust as well. It is probably about quarter open as well. So at this point, Let me show you guys a little closer what this looks like. All right, so now that you've got a pretty, or had a pretty decent view, I'm going to Stop this, temp it. Yeah, we're we are like nowhere near done. Anything. This thing's gonna be 200 degrees on the outside, it's still less than 100 degrees on the inside. All right, so in the middle, I'm looking at a temperature, it's got 65 degrees on it. All right. I'm, I know I'm gonna have to throw in the towel and just get this in the house, get it in the oven. I'll cook it low and slow until it finishes. This was a good idea. Uh, maybe if I'd have made the pork shoulder a little smaller, but this is a this was an eight pound pork shoulder that I had here. I did let it cook out here on the rotisserie for an hour though, and it looks it looks good. 
but yeah this is nowhere near going to be done I don't think it'll like the outside will be burnt up to a crisp before it gets done on the inside here I'm trying to debate on whether or not I want to spread out some coals down in the bottom of here and then spread the coals out spread the fire out and try to get the temperature down that much lower but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that so I might experiment see if I can get that done if I can do that then I'll leave it out here on the rotisserie but right now there's too much heat I, I think Weber's little thing we're putting the heat on both sides it was just too much now one of the other things I thought about doing is getting a slow and sear putting the slow and sear down in here getting this charcoal that I have out here putting it in the slow and sear so I only have heat coming off of one side I don't know maybe I'll try that first as opposed to taking it in the house and putting it in the oven but I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this ring and, and do all of this stuff without messing this up too too much but I'll figure that out you guys will probably just sit and watch for a couple minutes and um, we'll go from there Okay, so let's see what happens. I'll let this go for another half an hour or so. I'm gonna try to get my temperatures down. Uh, let's see what it's doing right now. I don't want to close, I barely want it open. See if we can keep this out here for a little while longer okay so i am back out at the rotisserie and you guys see the temperature there a little over 250 which is pretty good and i swapped out you guys saw me switch out to the slow ones here so we are still doing some what looks like decent numbers on the outside but the slow and sear, I guess because it's not as much heat, is doing a pretty decent job of uh, not cooking as fast. So I'm going to stop the rotisserie for a second. Let's... Yeah, we're... Alright, so that's a 150. And let's go into the middle. And we're nowhere near any sort of temperature. All right, so I'm gonna let this stay out here. We'll let this stay out here for maybe, maybe another half an hour or so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it and get it in the house in the oven. And I'm gonna get it cooking at like 200, maybe 250, I don't know. But to be honest, it's cooking out here at 250. I might just leave it alone. I don't know, we'll see. Hey, as promised, I'm back out here. It's been another half an hour. So we are looking at two hours that this pork shoulder has been. It's been two hours since I started this pork shoulder. And the rotisserie is working pretty well. But I think if I were to do this again, I would definitely use the slow and sear with less heat, less charcoal. All of that charcoal that I had in here before, it was just too much, whatever. It was just too much. But maybe it's just too much for what I'm cooking. And I've never used it before, done anything on it before. And with Weber, or what they were saying was uh, using a chicken or cooking a chicken with the rotisserie. So, that being said, I told you guys that I would get this in the oven. I, I know that the outside is cooking a lot faster. 
and I wanted to. Oh, we're getting some temperature down inside at 120 degrees. Here, let's just turn this off. Stop being lazy. All right, you know what? Uh oh. Maybe. Still only 106 degrees here. There's 107 degrees down in the middle there. And yep, I'm hitting hitting the bar. So that's definitely the middle. 104. But the outside edge is looking at 150. So it's not actually climbing very much. Uh-oh. Alright, you know what? I think the outside edge is is keeping itself basted, which isn't allowing the temperature to rise too much. We're gonna let it ride. I'm gonna let it ride. 102 down in the middle. All right, so I'm gonna turn this back on. And I guess I'll come check it in another hour. One hour later. So we're at the three hour mark. It is going on uh, two o'clock. I put this on at 11 o'clock. And the temperature, and the temperature in the grill is starting to go down. But let's see what this temperature is doing on the outside here. Actually, let's turn this off. All right, 130, 167, 170, all right, not too bad. 145 and all the way in. We got 139. All right. So let's talk about this for a quick second. So you see that there's moisture from inside of the meat that's coming on the outside of the meat. What the meat is basically doing is sweating and cooling itself off, which I think is cool as hell. Though we know that this is something that happens pretty regularly. I was I was worried that it was gonna cook too fast on the outside. So I'm happy that it has in fact slowed down. So what I'm gonna do, my wife and I are gonna run a, run a quick errand. I'm gonna put this in the house in the oven in like two and a quarter. And I'm just gonna let it cook very slowly. I'm gonna set up a thermometer in there and we're gonna see what it does. But so far, this is looking pretty good. Let me, let me just turn this back on for you guys to see, to get the full experience. It looks good though. Basting itself. All right. So I have a pan over there in the pan from earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in the pan and then we'll get it finished in the oven. Later that same evening. Oh, <laughs>